it's like running a marathon, right? You, you run the New York City Marathon, it's 26 miles, you go through the five boroughs and you cross the finish line, you got your hands up, I did it, I did it, I did it, and the guy tells you, hey, by the way, buddy, this is not a marathon, this is triathlon. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, first and foremost, it looked like some of you guys uh, had an issue with uh, the volume on yesterday's uh, video. I apologize, I had no idea. Uh, Kyler is aware of it. He's going to make sure the volume is crystal clear and loud. So thank you very much for the feedback. Again, I had no idea. Uh, as always, guys, please support uh, the channel by uh, liking. If you haven't so uh, done so, please subscribe. No get notifications every single time uh, there is a video. So let's talk about it, right? So after last week's 8% uh, move, which is, again, staggering to even say it out loud, uh, the question was, well, what was the market going to do, right? And as we, if you watch the weekend video, we talked about, well, there's, you know, there's always a chance uh, that the market was going to, you know, kind of rest a little bit, digest a little bit of its gains, take a little bit of a breather. Uh, that's exactly what happened, okay? If you traded today, you kind of know, for the exception of one or two names, one of them uh, was Netflix just continued to go uh, out of its mind, just literally big, big move, took out its earnings highs and traded all the way up to 311 and one or two other things. But if you notice the majority of the names, especially in the technology sector, after their really, really big moves, they rested, they paused. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you look at the queues, uh, look at the run-up. You had a three-day run-up going from all the way 263 uh, to 289. That's kind of a big deal. It needs a rest. Uh, a name, for example, like Microsoft that had a really big three-day run going from 224 all the way to two, you know, 250. It needs a rest. You can go through the whole, you know, the whole NASDAQ 100, you're gonna see exactly the same thing. And the question is, what happens next? And before we go on to what happens next, this is kind of like the most important part, um, especially for new traders. Uh, new traders wake up, especially in your first two, three years, and you wake up with last night's two inch, two inch erection. And that's great, me too. The problem is two inches is all I got. Your problem is you're too emotional still. You're still in the honeymoon phase of the market. You're still in go, 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 go. The market's open. I have to put on 68 positions in the first 30 seconds or I'm a failure. It's not exactly how it works, right? And there's a time and a place for everything. When there's an area of the market that gets very, very aggressive, like we saw uh, last week with the NASDAQ 100 that reclaimed the 50-day moving average, that was an aggressive sign. That's why you saw not Thursday sessions, we saw that 7.5% move, but Friday session, the continuation off the reclaim from the previous day, right? That's aggressive. But at some point, stocks get into supply, right? And that's exactly what you saw here today in the NASDAQ 100. You saw that in plenty of stocks, right? Look at Apple. Apple's just up here, for example. It hit supply, came back in. If you look, for example, on NVIDIA, right, you'll, you'll see this over and over and over again, right? Hits supply, and you'll see that's this Bollinger Band, came back in. Amazon, completely trapped in the middle of the channels, didn't even get, get, didn't get, even get up there. Uh, Meta did exactly the same thing, hit supply, come back in. So it, when, you're, when you're in a runaway trade, and that's exactly where we were in the last couple of days, digestion days are super important. So if you're a brand new trader and you're waking up in the morning, you know, unfortunately, you, you don't have enough experience to understand the difference between what happened on Thursday, what happened on Friday, and what happened today. For you, it's all the same thing. The market's open, I'm going. As Kramer uh, has, has said in the past, there's a bull market somewhere. And, okay, right? There's a bull market somewhere. The only problem is the bull market's going on right now is getting a scenario too much too fast, and that's why exactly we kind of rested today. The problem with that is when you're a brand new trader is you don't know the difference between stop and start, You know, right? You don't know the difference between passive aggression. You don't know the difference between expansion and contraction. And what you learned today was what the, what the power of contraction looks like or in layman's turn, digestion, right? Digesting uh, recent gains. And the problem with digesting is, you know, after an 8% move, it was a 5% move, 4% move, you know, we probably need one day or so, right? The fact that we had an 8% move, you might need a couple of days of sideways action uh, to kind of get everybody to kind of take a deep breath. Again, it's like 
running, uh, it's like running a marathon, right? You, you run the New York City Marathon, it's 26 miles, you go through the five boroughs and you cross the finish line, you got your hands up, I did it, I did it, I did it. And the guy tells you, hey, by the way, buddy, this is not a marathon, this is triathlon. So you have to bike for another, you know, five miles and you have to swim for another 10 miles, right? And you'll be t exhausted, right? You, you think you finished, you think you've won something, but the problem is you're tied and, and the race is, well, first of all, never going to be ending, but the point is you're not there yet. And that's exactly what we face here with the Bulls. The problem with what's going to happen in the next couple of days is you're going to see a lot of channels continue to contract until the Bulls get their deep breath. I believe somewhere around, probably around Wednesday or Thursday, we're probably going to resume. The good thing about it is, again, we continue to build, right? As long as we stay above this light blue line, which is the 50-day moving average, we're good. We're Gucci, as the children say, right? We're good to go. The problem is we don't know how long this distribution, distribution or digestion level uh, will take place. Maybe it could be one more day, maybe it could be two more days. But the point is after you have such really cartoonish like candles in such a short period of time, they need a rest. Now, what can you do here, right? There's two things you can do. Number one, you can be completely oblivious to what's going on here and wake up tomorrow at 9.30 and go, oh my God, I got to trade, I got to trade, I got to trade, I got to trade. And probably by 9.33, when you put on 16 positions, they all kind of went up and down 13 cents. You finally realize, well, wait, wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? How comes nothing is moving? It's not because it's nothing's moving, it's because things are resting. That's the whole point. So you have, a, you, have a, you have two things you can do. You could either ignore what I'm saying and go guns blazing tomorrow, 9.31 in the morning, or you can, you can do what a lot of traders are doing right now, are waiting for signs of a peak, right? A peak, a little a perk, up, perk, up, uh, perk up of uh, previous day's channels. And that's exactly what a lot of professional traders are gonna do. We're gonna sit there and we're gonna wait for these things to kind of resume. Again, might take a day, might take two. The problem is if you turn around and start trading tomorrow, right? Like you did last Thursday, you're gonna run into a world of crap. You're gonna churn yourself. And more important, well, equally as important is your mental equity is going to be depleted. So by the time Wednesday and Thursday rolls around, you're going to be so brain dead because you can't get anything going because you don't realize, or at least don't acknowledge that these channels are contracting, that you're going to be so tired that when they, everything kind of wakes up, you won't even trust it. And oh, by the way, your brain's going to be dead. You're going to be a mush going into Friday's session. So trust me, there's, there's two things that separates uh, professional traders and novice traders. It's the ability to sit, right? You want to trade but you don't have to trade. You really, really want to trade, but you don't need to trade. And that's the point, right? You don't need to trade. Everybody has a different style, a different philosophy. Uh, you could be an intraday trader, a swing trader, a scalper, whatever, whatever, whatever your drug of choice is. And we talked about this uh, so many times, but unfortunately not every single day, especially doing, during a distribution channel or a digestive period, is your spotlight, right? Your, your, your specific stocks going to be highlighted. For example, for me, I trade 99% of my stocks beta, right? Everything went sideways today. I had zero value. And the problem with zero value is I missed the pivot on Netflix. Not only did I miss the opening range at 291, I also, uh, I decided not to do the 306 before I ran to 311 just because of the liquidity, just because everything else was doing absolutely nothing. So I put myself in a situation while, well, you know, taking FOMO, FOMO out of the picture and, and, and attacking the market with common sense. There's days throughout the week, there's days throughout the month, you're gonna lose value, right? Like you guys remember on Thursday, I took it easy on Thursday, despite a 7.5% rally because we gapped up 5%, right? I can't, couldn't wrap my brain around the, the, the idea of going long 5% into the open. The next day, Friday was ridiculous value, right? There was everything was going on, cues. Cues, this one, this one, the video, blah, 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 AMD, every, everything was going nuts. So the point is not every single day is going to meet your uh, specific qualifications, your criteria. It's not gonna match up your process. And unfortunately, that's the key. And for me, uh, familiarity breeds contempt. And for me, that's a good thing because again, the fact that I'm trading the same stocks over and over again, I know what to expect of them. I know their tendencies. I know their personalities. More important is I know their average true range. And we've said this so many times on different, on different uh, days that if you start trading random stocks, you're going to get random results. These are facts. 
stocks and you, you have no relationship. You have no history with the stocks. And that's exactly what happens in a distribution channel. You're going to start looking at names that you usually trade and then they're not getting anywhere. Uh, so I, I think going into tomorrow, not that, I, not that I'm sitting there going, oh, I want to short some stocks. It's not really what I'm saying is, but I did find some names that did not participate. And that's the key. While there's distribution, you have a choice of trading stocks randomly, start looking at different things or finding some setups that look pretty good. So just in case there's one more day of a back test or one, one more day of distribution and the NASDAQ kind of goes sideways, I actually did find some pretty good channels here and it's some pretty good group, you know, some pretty good stocks in different groups. Again, sometimes beggars can't be choosers while we wait. Check out some of these channels. Look at the, you know, look at the defense stocks, look at general dynamics, right? As we as the market was exploding Thursday and Friday, general dynamics had this really, really ugly move. Look at this general dynamics. Look at the, look at this range here. If GD confirms Friday's channel, man, maybe we get a nice little wash in. Again, usually not a name that I would watch. Again, beggars can't be choosers, right? Look at Lockheed Martin, the same group, right? Look, look at these channels here, right? These are swan dives. Lockheed Martin starts taking down the bottom of the channel here. There's a lot of room uh, to go as well. Look at a name like Tesla, right? I was watching Tesla today. I go, wow, this thing looks really, really good. And then I turned around. I go, wow, it looks really, really bad. And they started came, coming in with 200 calls to the upside. They started coming in with 180 puts to the downside. And guess what? It did absolutely nothing the whole day except for go absolutely sideways. So maybe again, maybe Tesla, right? Maybe Tesla either wakes up tomorrow or it starts losing the previous couple of days channels. Again, we have to be a little bit creative. We can't just walk into tomorrow and say, all right, let's wait for Amazon to break out. Amazon broke out four days ago, right? Let's wait for Apple the way we break out. Yeah, Apple Apple not necessarily broke out, but Apple started its move four days ago, right? So it's one what, what of those situations that you might wanna start looking at some alternative names. You might wanna start looking at some alternative groups, or if you're an adult, right, these are all decisions, or you could turn around and say, you know what, I don't even wanna trade, right? I don't wanna trade these random stocks. I rather wait for everything to wake up again and start getting on the second day of the move. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's most important part to understand. As long as we stay above the 50 day, and that's exactly what we're doing, even if we back test one more day here, we hit this rising support, it's still considering building above the 50 day moving average, as the old saying goes, above the 50 bullish below the 50 bearish. Tomorrow, you got Walmart coming out with earnings. Obviously, it's going to be kind of an important thing because it's going to highlight uh, retail and consumer uh, spending. But look at this chart on Walmart, man. If, they, if, if this thing starts building off this bottom channel here, Walmart could get hit as well. So keep an eye on that as well. One interesting name, kind of a speculation name you guys might want to keep an eye on, Look at this uh, DWAC. Apparently, you know, this is like, t you know, tied in with Trump. Apparently, Trump is going to announce something. What could it possibly be, right? Keep an eye on this thing. This thing is actually flagging. If this thing starts taking out the top of the range here, maybe this thing wakes up. So again, tomorrow you have to be a little bit more creative, a lot more disciplined, but more important is you have to be an adult. Again, children and adults are as different as somebody who wants to buy stock or a trader. And if you don't know which one are you, Again, you have a lot of work and a lot of self-reflection, but the point is, again, we say this every single day, the name of the game is stay in business. Guys, have a blessed day. Have an awesome, awesome day tomorrow. Hopefully everybody sees each other again. Stay healthy, everybody. Love you all. Take care.